Friday. It's a new year and for many of us that means getting certain aspects of our lives in order like our finances and that's at any age. Today we hear some tips and tricks on managing money. Financial experts like Kathy Hankard say helping someone learn more about their finances may be one of the best decisions you can help them make. The world in general and finances can be a very complicated situation for a lot of people and so to have someone who has more expertise in given areas um, can just be very beneficial for people. It may be particularly beneficial for your young adult, helping them kickstart a smart financial future. The earlier you start, the better. So really getting your children or you know a young person in your life off on the right foot. I cannot overstress the importance of that. Financial experts say there are a lot of ways to help your child get off on the right foot, including books on how to manage money, financial planning sessions, and even helping them with their student loans. One of the best gifts I think a parent can give um, is the gift of debt relief, and not necessarily by paying it for the child, of course, but rather by showing them their options. Lisa Andrews recommends looking at paying off student loans based on your income rather than a fixed rate every month. Andrews says that kind of setup could help save thousands. That's come into play for some of my clients who are helping their, their students pay down their student loan debt. Um, so parents can benefit as well as the students themselves. Chances are the young adult in your life doesn't even know they need it, but it's something that'll help them for years to come. Most of my clients are 50s, 60s, and almost everyone answers, I wish I had started saving earlier, or I wish I had seen a financial planner earlier. Other advice from the financial pros, help your kids plan their estate. Experts say estate planning is something every adult needs and maybe doesn't manage. Well, oftentimes the stress of financial issues begin at about that age. You get on your own and you say, oh, things cost money. And that's not all that young people have to stress about. They've got exams, projects, and papers that need to get done. But one group says they have a solution, a four-legged study buddy. Jimmy has more on that. <laughs> When you can't possibly write another line or read another page, sometimes tales are all you need. Nice little relaxing break between writing. This is really, really stress relieving. During a high stress time, college students fill a room at the library. They're not studying, but anxiously awaiting for their chance to pet and tug away their stress and sleep deprivation. The students are under a lot of pressure during this week and next. Pet some dogs. I thought it'd be cool. Get this dog up in my face. Yeah, that's nice. I'm having an affair on my dog. Some of the students say it's a reminder of home for them. I love my dogs. I miss them so much. I live two hours from home. Just say shake. The comfort dogs understand tests. They pass some of their own to be in this room. Every single pooch has a therapy certification or the seal of approval from the Canine Good Citizen Program. They're just cuddly and nice and kind. Therapy dog to Paul visited a nursing home this morning. She was very calm and very quiet and very respectful of the elderly. And here you've seen her where she's flirting and she's playing tug and she's much more up. A simple solution to the monotony of studying. A furry break, bringing smiles to students like no two-legged creature can. My son goes to DMAC and they're giving free massages and he said, I'd much rather have this. And I have to agree with them. Now, therapy dogs are used for all sorts of things. They're trained to provide affection and comfort to people in hospitals, retirement homes, nursing homes, schools, hospices, disaster areas, and also to help people with disabilities or learning difficulties. Well, locally, a program called LEAP, which stands for Literacy Education Assistant Pups, is aimed at improving the literacy skills of children. Delmarva Life's Sean Stryker joins us from the Rehoboth Beach Library with one of those pups. Sean? Yeah, Lisa, you said it. Therapy dogs can be used for all sorts of things. They never cease to amaze me, but I never could imagine that they're actually used to help children and people read and calm down and learn how to improve, actually improve their literary, literary skills. Excuse me. I'm here with Sarah Smith, who's the Rehoboth Beach coordinator for the LEAP program. Sarah, what is the LEAP program? How did it get started? Uh, ten years ago, Leslie Brown, who's our president, came to Delaware from Washington, D.C., and she had run a therapy program 
there for dogs and discovered that there was not one in Sussex County. So she decided to start a literacy program mm -hmm. with the dogs in, in Lower Delaware. So it started with a few dogs, but it has grown substantially. Absolutely. It started out with six teams, and in the last 10 years, it's grown to 60 teams. All kinds of dogs. All variations of dogs. So we got, what kind of dog is Ringo? Ringo is a beagle mix. Okay. And, um, but there's also golden retrievers. Um, Labs, you know. um, poodles. Pomeranians, so, we've got every variation of so dog how you do can they imagine. Help the, how do they help the, it's not just children, it's also adults, but how do they help? They are encouraging and mm -hmm. non-judgmental. So um, children sometimes struggle to read aloud. They're um, maybe unsure of their reading skills. And coming to the library and reading to the dogs, the dogs show them unconditional positive regard um, and you know encourage them. They don't, they don't judge the reading at all. They encourage them to be able to read aloud. I'm sure it actually gets them excited, too, if they know they're coming to read and they get to play with the dog as well. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the schools require um, certain amounts of reading time in the evenings for kids. And they'll they would much rather come read to a dog and have the interaction, get to pet, um, and hang out with, with some neat dogs um, rather than sitting at home and reading by themselves. So we're at the Rehoboth Beach Library and this is where you're kind of in charge of. When are you guys here running your programs? Six to seven every Wednesday night. So every Wednesday, six to seven, you don't need to set up a sign up ahead of time, correct? correct? And if you want to uh, call the library, you can do so at 302-227-8044. Now, you're also at various schools, and there's, you said, 16 different locations Correct. around the area. Um, and if you want to find out more information on those locations, visit our website, wboc.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Lisa, you can see Ringo. Ringo's a cool, go uh, cool dog down here. He's hanging out. Um, he's really calm. I wouldn't mind reading to this dog. I'm not a big reader, but if I had Ringo sitting by my side, I'd, uh, I'd put in a couple more hours. I'll send it back to you. All right, Sean, I think you're right. I would love to cuddle up with a four-legged friend and a good book because reading really is therapeutic. And one family hopes it can heal as well. Find out what inspired them to come together to write a children's book and how it may help heal broken hearts. Well, this girl is also doing a lot of writing. In fact, she's not even a teenager yet. She's already launched her career as an author. She shares her story of success. That's next. Plus, how books inspired another young girl to demand a change. This seven-year-old saw something she didn't like and did something about it. You've got to hear her story. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.